All right, so today I thought I'd give you a quick tour of my reptile room, some of my ball pythons here in the racks. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pulling open tubs and kind of drag my lighting along. And I can show you right in the tubs and kind of randomly go through my racks and show you some of the awesome ball pythons that I have here in my collection. All right, so here is my collection of snakes. As a matter of fact, I have three racks that are full of snakes. I actually have another hatchling rack behind me that holds 65 hatchlings. Currently, that one's empty. And over here on the right, I have all my female breeder ball pythons. Then I have my hatchling rack over here, about half full, filling up pretty good. And then I have my grow outs and a couple boa tubs here. And I, I thought I could just go really quick through some of these snakes for you. And take a look at this guy. This is my big corn snake. As a matter of fact, I actually sold this one. This guy's name is Big Red, and I sold him. I just haven't shipped him yet. I'm waiting for some shipping. Take a look at that guy. Really awesome corn snake. And it's funny, he likes to kind of dig down and hide in the substrate. He's got plenty of room, a few hides and everything. And I thought I'd just kind of randomly, or just maybe I can kind of go through all these real quick. This one is my triple hat female albino pied clown. Look at how big she's getting, nice and big. And then maybe another two years and I'll be breeding her. I actually have four of those triple hats. Take a look at this. Here's another female. This is another albino pied clown triple hat. And we can just kind of go through the tubs. Here's another one. This is my male albino pied clown. The problem is, is I only have one male. I started thinking, man, if something happens to this male, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. And here's another female uh, triple hat albino pied clown. Look, she just shed out and she's raring to go for looking for something to eat there. And then I have this one. This is Crusher. Crusher is my my male scaleless head lesser. Take a look at this beauty. He is a really awesome snake. Super bright, bright and fleshy. And probably I probably won't breed him this year because he's only one year old, and I've had some bad luck in the past breeding one year old males. I have had, I've had kind of a rough year from one year old males. Here is my fire pied or a pyro pied. So the fire in the pied actually lightens the white or the colored part of the snake, which is really awesome. He was super bright when he was younger. Here is, let's see, which is this one. This is another one I sold. This is just a pastel, 100% het desert ghost, one of the ones I sold. And it's getting a little big for the hatchling rack, so I moved them up here. This is Fluffy, <laughs> the 2019 male. So that was one of my hatchlings from last year. This is my lesser pied, really beautiful. It's interesting when you mix lesser and pied because you get an all white snake with blue eyes even though it's not a blue eyed leucistic which is pretty wild. Here is a clown female and this one laid eggs last year and I don't think she's gonna lay this year. She's looking, well, I, I don't know. She's a, she's a pretty small clown male. So I, I, I've actually bred her with my my banana enchi clown. And then this one, this one, this is the one that always bites me, <laughs> the little snapper. And this one is a bumblebee. And she actually laid a clutch of eggs that was mostly slugs with one kind of a boob egg that may or may not hatch it's in the incubator. This is a really awesome snake. This is uh, an albi uh, This is a pinstripe hide female. I've been really looking forward to breeding this girl. She's still pretty small. I've been trying to breed her, and she keeps going off for food and really picky. Here is my banana inchy clown. Take a look at this beauty. He is a really amazing snake. That's probably my most expensive snake that I have in my collection. The most ever paid for snake. So I have a project here. I've been working on these scaleless head, head caramel albinos, shooting for some caramel albino scaleless snakes, which I've um, been working on for a while now. I actually bred these back to the female, kind of a kind of a side project. This is a lesser clown. Look at this. This is my lesser clown female. I actually bred her this year, and I don't know if she's gonna go or not. <laughs> some of these, some of these are you know right on the edge of 1,500 grams. The problem is. If you pair them up and they don't go, they just fast for a long time, kind of works against you. Here's my male albino pied, really awesome albino pied. And here is kind of my digger project, my head pied. And it's interesting today, they're all up by the water bowl. They're usually always in the back, which is kind of a weird thing. This is weird, they're never up front like this. 
Kind of weird. And here is my Desert Ghost. This is actually a pastel inchy Desert Ghost male. Really awesome. I actually bred them this year to a few females. Here is my Lemon Blast Scaleless Head female. I've been waiting on her to get up to size. She just is not up to size. And it's kind of interesting that I've actually been changing the water every other day and they hardly ever kind of dump anything in there that sits for very long. And let's see, this is my female scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. Eventually I'm gonna unload probably some of these scaleless heads. I'll probably keep all my females and probably unload some of my male scaleless heads and, keep, and kind of hold back some of my other ones like the lesser scaleless head and stuff like that. Here's another, uh, this is a scaleless head lemon blast. Been waiting on this girl to get up to weight too and this one's been really super picky. For some reason she'll only eat live rats, which is really frustrating. So trying to show all my snakes in one video is always a challenge because I have so many snakes. Here is another male scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. And I was actually breeding some of these back to my female 100% head caramel albino to try to hit some visuals. Here is a female scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. All these female scaleless heads, I'll probably, I'll probably hang on to those. I'm shooting for eventually the completely scaleless. And they're kind of going through, a lot of them are like right at the thousand gram wall. This is a pastel scaleless head female. And here is my male calico bamboo. Take a look at that beauty. He is a really awesome snake. He actually produced a whole bunch of calico stuff this year. Bunch of calico hatchlings. Here is my coral glow tucked up here. If I can actually get my light to, to kind of show you that. That is, he's produced a lot of really nice coral glows for me. Here is my spider pine white wedding. I actually had sold this one. He's doing really good. And this one over here is my male bamboo lesser. Bamboo lesser is an allelic combination. Uh, I actually tried to breed him last year and I think he was a little bit too small. None of the normals that I bred him with actually went, which is a bummer. Here is my female pastel pinstripe bamboo way up on the top my lights my lights are like barely gonna reach on the top that's the problem i almost need more lighting in here so maybe some more ceiling light or something but if i can move the light up this is this is queen touch she is just hanging out here on the top of my rack so my hatchling rack, I have some of these new hatchlings here that just hatched out. Some of them have shed. This is the only bamboo that I have so far, a bamboo calico, maybe pastel on that one. I might actually hold that one back. This one is, we named this one Umbilicus. He is, had a problem with his umbilical cord. He's doing really good. He's a calico. Uh, these are possible hat desert ghosts too. This one's named Spaghetti. This one is a pastel kind of digging down. What I like to do is if they're kind of digging down up here, I like to kind of pull them out and then put them back on the hot spot over there. He's actually uh, uh, pastel. As a matter of fact, he might looks, almost looks like he has a little calico. I'll have to go back and double check the identification on these after they shut out. This one is another pastel calico. Take a look at this one. That one's pretty awesome. We named that one Joker. This one we named Jeeves. These guys have not eaten. This is a normal possible hat desert ghost. And what I like to do is just kind of pick them up and put them right back in the hot spot so they kind of know what is going on with the hot spot. Here is zucchini, another normal. This is a, a possible hat desert ghost on these. Just a normal. I haven't figured out the males and the females yet. Here's some from last year. This is Cobra, my spider. Here is, uh, these are all sold as a matter of fact. This is Pee Wee, my Coral Glow. <laughs> and let's see, this is Spot, my Pastel Pinstripe. This is actually a, an Enchi Pastel Pinstripe. It has some Enchi in the mix, pretty awesome. Here is Raven Pastel Pinstripe. Take a look at that, 100% Head Desert Ghost. That is a really beautiful snake right there. Here is Sunshine, another spider. Take a look at that. Ugh, like you keep the tub in there. <laughs> this is a little bit challenging. And here is Cupcake. Let me move, I'll have to move some lights here. 
All right, so this is Cupcake. Take a look at this. This is a scaleless head, male scaleless head, no other jeans in the mix. And then these are from my second clutch this year. This one is actually, uh, uh, I actually labeled it as a pastel. It looks like it's just a pastel. We named this one Slippy. This one is Bobble. Look at Bobble shed out. Hey, take a look at that. This one is a normal possible het desert ghost. Here is Peanut. Peanut is another normal possible het desert ghost. Looking good. So I'm a little bit challenged with my lighting because my lights only go that high. That is the maximum amount my lights will go. So we'll see how good we can do with just lights here. This is, this is, I think this is my visual desert ghost. Take a look at that. It looks like he's shedding for the second time. This one's actually eating, doing really good. He has already eaten four times. Pretty amazing. All these have shed out and have eaten at least three meals. These have all eaten four as a matter of fact. So this one is freckles. So this is, a, a, I think this is a super pastel calico. And I have another one over here. I think this is a super pastel anchi calico on this one. Take a look at this one. If we can actually get it out with the lights and take a look at that. <laughs> He's doing pretty good. Eight, four rodents already looking fantastic and shed out. You can definitely see a shed there. And then this one is my anchi. 100% head desert goes. Take a look at that one. Pretty awesome. And then I have Rusty, my pastel head desert ghost. I have quite a few in here looking pretty good. And then I still haven't figured out the males and the females, and I still haven't figured out exactly what I want to keep. So this is a super pastel, 100% head desert ghost. Look at that one. That is fantastic. So I'm thinking I'll probably hold the super pastel back. Definitely hold the visual desert ghost. Probably hold these two super pastel calicos and the one with the enchi. And maybe, uh, probably the bamboo. <laughs> Promise. There's so many of them. Then you start producing more and more and more. And then pretty soon you have like 15 you want to hold back. And it's like, nah, I don't want to expand that much. And then you start deciding to sell them so that's kind of the dilemma so every time I do a video and try to do all my snakes and it turns into a really long ordeal so I don't know if, <laughs> I guess we can go through most of these this is where Bobby lives up here in this tub and he just usually hangs out in this tub he, the ball pythons they really like these dark enclosures and then when you of course Bobby is the one that he's out most of the day filming you know doing film you know doing recordings and stuff like that and then most of the times he prefers matter of fact I think he prefers to be in his tub most of the time and then in this one I usually have my reticulated python I'm actually breeding that one and then I have my pinstripe here we can kind of go through a few females if you want to kind of see some of the females. This girl just laid a big clutch of eggs, which is really awesome. And I have those in the incubator. I actually bred my coral glow with this one. That'll be really exciting. Then I have my jungle woman spider in here. Let me see if I can move my table back. This guy's going into a deep shed. He's been eating pretty good too. Actually, he's started eating some rats more often lately. He's, he started out as a mouser. I've been kind of getting him on rats. Here is my pastel calico. Take a look at this girl. She just laid some eggs too, which is pretty exciting. Gave me a big clutch of eggs. And as a matter of fact, all my calico hatchlings came, for, half of them came from this girl, which is pretty awesome. And I found out this one was 100% desert ghost, which I didn't know that she was head desert ghost. And here is another lemon blast down here. This one's been super picky and hasn't really eaten very much. I didn't breed her this year, I gave her the year off. So I don't know how good this video is gonna be just kind of blowing through all these snakes like this with bad lighting and just kind of showing you real quick. Take a look at this one. I was actually breeding this one this year. This is my 100% head caramel albino. Look, she's really going into a shed. The problem with this one is she started eating like a horse. She is eating like crazy. I don't think she's gonna lay because of how she's been eating. And this is my lesser female. I've been giving her the year off. She's been eating pretty good. So this one, I'm thinking about maybe pairing up this fall, which would be pretty cool. Getting some more blue-eyed leucistics. A lot of people have been asking for blue-eyed leucistics. And then I have this one. I haven't really decided what this girl is gonna do. 
I bred her with my scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino. This one is 100% head caramel albino. She's been bowl wrapping for a month, month and a half, not eating and bowl wrapping. So it's possible that girl could lay some eggs at some point. Here is one, a big pastel pinstripe that I was breeding this year. And she didn't lay, and I don't think she's gonna lay. She's, I don't know, she's pretty hefty though. But she hasn't been eating, so there's still hope for this one to actually lay this year. All right, only 12 snakes left, so let's see if we can kind of blow through these last, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I thought that one was gonna take a bite. Woo, yeah, you gotta watch these tubs. Sometimes you open them up, and they can grab your hand. You just kind of randomly open the tub. This is my pastel pinstripe female. Uh, so she actually locked up this year, but I don't think she's gonna breed. I don't think she's gonna actually lay any eggs. So she's, it's kind of funny sometimes, you know, these snakes can go and sometimes they just go on this really long fast and they won't eat and won't eat. And it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating breeding some that are, you know, kind of on the edge to start with and then you pair them up and then they just go on a really long fast and don't lay any eggs. And then we saw Bobby and this is my normal, an unusual looking normal that is kind of more of like a khaki, almost like a desert camouflage color and has a really reduced pattern, really interesting. And this is my albino head pie. This one's been super picky eating. I just cannot get her to, to eat very well. She actually laid a clutch of eggs one year and I actually got a visual albino pie, which is pretty awesome. This is a pastel pinstripe. This one, uh, I gave the year off and it's still super picky. These ball pythons, they can kind of drive you crazy. Here is my normal female number one. This is the one that I got for free on Craigslist. It was really awesome. And really super small when I got her and then she actually, she actually laid eggs last year and I tried to breed her this year. I don't think she's gonna go. Uh, sometimes back to back breeding is kind of hard on the snake. All right, six more snakes. Let's see if we can get through them, and I can, I'll show you every single snake in my collection. Now, let me tell you, when I'm taking care of these snakes, it's a lot to actually go through, and even just check on them and make sure they have everything. This is my pastel spider desert ghost. I was breeding her this year, but she doesn't look like she's full of eggs. That one is not laying eggs yet. She's kind of driving me crazy. And this one, I haven't decided if this one's gonna go. She's looking pretty big. A really huge pie. Look at how big this pie girl is. Really massive. She looks like she could lay some eggs this year. That would be a really exciting clutch of eggs right there. I actually bred this one with that fire pie. So I get half fire pies and half regular pies. And then I have this, this pastel female up here. This one, this one is really super skinny. She actually laid a clutch of eggs and she's back on food looking pretty good. All right, so I don't know if you can see the ones up on top here because my light doesn't really reach. <laughs> I've been thinking about getting some more lights up here. So this one is my another one of my lesser females and I gave her the year off. Both these lessers, uh, they've been pretty picky and one of them laid eggs last year. I actually got some blue-eyed leucistics and then I gave them the year off. So let's see what else we have here. We have this normal number, normal female number three and take a look at this big girl. She is a really big, normal female. And this one, I actually paired up to, this one I paired to my Bamboo Lesser. So if she actually lays a clutch of eggs this year, half would be Bamboo, half would be Lesser, which would be really awesome. And she's a really dark normal, really big too. And then my last snake, <laughs> let's see if I could get my last one up here. I almost need like, uh, kind of a different setup for the lighting for doing it in the tub like this. This is kind of crazy. But this is a really big albino. She's doing pretty good. I gave her the year off too. Gave quite a few of my females the year off because they've been, some of them laid really late, some of them been kind of picky. And I say I'm probably breeding about half of my females because I give uh, quite a few of them the year off. All right, so there you have it. That is all my snakes, kind of shotgun style, just kind of quickly going through, dragging my light and my ladder behind me, trying to show you all these things. And usually what I do is if I'm showing all my snakes, I'll pull them out one at a time and I'll put them under the lights and I'll hold them over like a black fabric or something so you can see them really good. But if I actually show you all my snakes in one video, usually it's like a 40 or 50 minute video. It's really long. So, you know, actually just kind of running through the racks, it's a little bit quicker. I don't know how good this video is gonna be. Just kind of running through 
through them all really quick. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.